Okay, so welcome to Friday the 12th of June 2020. Well done for working so hard this week. I know it's been pretty full on trying to get through the book, but we're finally there. We've read the story and I hope you all enjoyed it and had fun with it. So today's lesson, we are going to do a bit of artwork and we're going to be able to have a little treat for the end of the week. So first of all, let's start with our ally, which is to use inference skills to form an impression of Skellig. So in today's lesson, we're going to think about the character of Skellig and how he is described. And for this lesson, we're going to focus on chapter 22 in particular and putting your art skills to use again. OK, so if you pause here, write the date in ally and then we can move on. OK, so for this part of the lesson, I would like you, like I said, to look at chapter 22 of the story. And I would like you to um, think about the verbs that are being used to describe the characters. So remember, a verb is an action word, OK, a doing word. Um, generally, they end in ing and they're used to describe the actions of a character. OK, so what I would like you to do, first of all, is describe the actions or the verbs used for Skellig in chapter 22 and the verbs for Michael and Mina in chapter 22. OK, when you are done with that, I want you to think about what is the difference between the two. So is there a clear difference between the actions of Skellig and the actions of Mina and Michael? And is there a distinct, like a distinct explanation then on how the characters are feeling in that chapter? So, for example, if Skellig is described as um, scowling and being upset and down and um, if he's his verbs are that he cowered and he um, looked down all the time and for Michael and Mina it was they were running everywhere and they were trying to um, talk to Skellig and they were trying to cheer him up then you can kind of see the difference in the emotions of the character so Skellig would be quite down and upset and Mina and Michael will be a little bit more upbeat and trying to look at the positive side of things okay so I want you to compare the two um, lots of characters so Skellig and then Michael and Mina and I want you to create this chart and put it into your book so in this you are just going to list the verbs um, and then underneath you can write your explanation um, answering those two questions there um, please make sure that you are thinking really carefully, take your time with it, because um, it's really showing me that you have good understanding of character if you do this really well. So pause the video here and complete that task first, please. OK, so Almond, who's the author, never gives the reader a specific description of Skellig. Based on the glimpses of Skellig found throughout the novel, what is your impression of Skellig? How might Michael describe Skellig at the end of the novel? Remember, when we talk about impressions, it means your ideas of what the character looks like. So if you have a think, if I was to say what Skellig looks like based on reading the story, I would say it was um, a, a man who had pale skin, very dry and chalky, very tall and slim. Um, maybe his hair was all matted, he might have looked quite dirty and um, he had wings. OK, so that will be my description of what I think Skellig looks like. Now, I don't know the age of Skellig. In one part of the story, it said that he was a lot younger than they expected him to look. So um, he wasn't completely um, like a completely old person, but he might have been someone who was younger. But because of the suffering, he makes him look older. OK, so I want you to have a real good think about that when you answer these questions okay imagine you had to describe the or michael was describing skellig at the end of the novel how would you describe skellig okay based on what you've read so far right pause the video here and do this question next please okay now the fun part i want you to have another go at drawing skellig so we have had a much better idea of what he looks like now with his wings and his pale skin. He's also been described as tall and thin. So you might need to refer to the rest of the story as a guide. Um, and I've also on the next few slides got some ex artistic impressions of what Skellig is assumed to look like. So because in the story there's no very clear 
uh, description or there's no images in the story at all. So we're not really sure. I think the author's done that on purpose to let us make up our own mind about what we think he really looks like. So I'm going to show you some artist impressions and then you can either copy one of them or you can add your own twist to it. So here's two that I've, I've seen. So one is obviously a silhouette of him sitting on um, bricks or uh, wood or books maybe and covered in cobwebs so he's obviously still in the garage at this time he has his wings his scruffy hair and he's kind of got a silhouette of maybe a younger looking person and in the other picture we have um, the back of Skellig with his beautiful wings um, sticking out there but if you notice you have Skellig with no hair in that picture and then you have another Skellig with lots of hair so um, you can decide which one you like or if you want to do something similar or something different and then there's other two one is they're both uh, front covers from the story one is a purposely blurred out picture but you kind of see um, the way that they've done that but the wings are the most prominent thing in the picture and then there's another one which is just kind of a silhouette of um, the character and you have um, the picture of the wings again so I would like you to kind of think about your interpretation. What would you like to do? Would you like to just focus on the wings? Would you like to draw the face and the body? Would you like to just do a silhouette of the shape? Whatever you'd like to do, I think it would be really amazing to have some artwork to send with your writing to secondary school. So if you can, have a go and um, really see what you can do. Okay? Right, I would pause the video here now, please, so that you can um, have a go at drawing that. OK, so as a reward for your hard work, I thought we could watch a film of Skellig. So if you click on the link below, there is the full feature length film of Skellig, the Owl Man, as it's called. Um, it's an hour and a half, so you don't have to watch it right now. Maybe you can watch it a bit later. Um, I think it's really a really good way to compare um, two different mediums. So compare the movie to the story and seeing how close they are together. Uh, whether they've been interpreted slightly differently and I think it's also another way of kind of reinforcing your understanding of the story so if there's parts of the story that you think oh I'm not quite sure I understand that when you watch the movie you probably will okay so I really would love you to watch it and um, tell me what you think right so we are going to send you are going to send in your work to me um, at the year six email address this is another example of um, a front cover that you could have done. Somebody's actually drawn it. It's not an official front cover. And I would love, love, love to see all of your work. I really um, enjoyed looking at some of your artwork from the last time we did this. So um, see what you can do. Have fun with it. Enjoy it and enjoy. Maybe you could do your drawing while you're watching the movie. I think that might be pretty good as well. So enjoy and um, have a lovely weekend. And I will speak to you on Monday.